Hey folks, how we doing today? I appreciate everybody joining me. I am back from my vacation to Branson with my family for fall break. Uh, we had a great time. Um, it was um, it was really good. We got to see, took the kids to go see a magic show, and uh, we took them to like a drive-through, walk-through kind of a petting zoo. They went to um, a like of a like a indoor zip line kind of a adventure park, rock wall climbing things like that. Uh, so yeah, we had a really good time. It was a it was a nice little break. But I am back. <clears throat> In the week I was gone, um, I was some of you may have seen I was busy on the Facebook page trying to answer questions for a lot of the new players that are coming to Medieval Dynasty because of console. Uh, so I tried my best to answer a lot of those questions uh, and help people out. Which got me thinking I should probably do uh, some type of a live stream when I got back to answer a lot of these questions for people. Uh, so that's kind of what this live stream is going to be about today. So what I'll be doing is I'll be going through uh, just pulling things out of a hat, so to say. I'll probably go through the official Medieval Dynasty Facebook page uh, and find a few questions there. I'll answer your questions in the stream. Uh, so that's kind of what we're, we're going to be doing today. Uh, let me go through here and do this. Make sure I'm finding all the right buttons and stuff. Sigvar, I appreciate you joining us. Hope you're doing well. Red Gal. Good morning. Uh, let's see. Outdoor Corey, new to the channel, new to the game. Uh, your vids have helped me a lot when I started out. Thank you. Well, thank you for watching. I appreciate it, Outdoor Corey. And thank you for joining the stream. Noir, good morning. Glad to see you. I am doing well. Thank you. Severin, hey, how you doing? Randy, good morning. Hope everyone is having a good Monday. Red Gal, I hope you're having a good Monday as well. Alrighty, so to get started, Cora, good morning. Glad to see you. To get started, when you first start the game, you're going to go through your chapter quests. Uh, so these are the quests that I've got up on the screen. Now, I am in uh, my Season 5, so I've already completed all of these. So when you go through and you start your chapter quest, it's the very first quest that you get when you talk to Unigost in Gustovia. You got to go and collect sticks and stones. You got to build you a little stone axe and a wooden hammer. You got to cut down some trees and grab some straw. Uh, the straw that you grab and the trees that you cut down are not enough to build your first house. Uh, these are strictly just requirements for the quest. That's it. And then of course you have to build your first house, which means you're going to go back and you're going to cut down some more trees and you're going to go back and probably pick some more straw. Uh, on this first quest, I highly recommend that you go and cut down at least 10 trees and pick you at least 200 straw. So the 200 straw is going to get you through your first few buildings. That way you don't have to keep going down to the river and finding straw and picking it and this, that, and the other. So right outside Gustovia, uh, right next to the water, there, there's a whole bunch of reeds. Now, when it tells you to pick straw, it's not going to say straw. It's going to say reed, R-E-E-D, at least in the English language. Obviously, if you're in another country or you're, you're following the game in a different language, it may say something else. Uh, but it's going to be a reed is what you're picking. And then the product from picking the reed is a straw. And yes, I did see this question while I was on vacation. Um, then obviously you want to build your first house. Now, when you go through this, you're going to see you got to make a rabbit trap. That's fine. The wooden spear. I don't necessarily recommend hunting with the wooden spear unless you're only hunting rabbits. Uh, anything else is going to be rather difficult. You want to try and get yourself at least the standard bow with some stone arrows. And you can actually steal a standard bow and I believe it's five stone leather or stone arrows and then some leather. 
at the hunting lodge in Tutki. Let's get out of here real quick. I'll go over here. The hunting lodge, so this is Tutki. The hunting lodge is this little square right there. So Raymond, who's a vendor and a farmer over in Tutki, he's a hunter. So you can actually buy bows and some arrows from him. Or you can go into this hunting lodge and steal a bow and some of the arrows. Take everything out of the little storage in there. Either way, if you're stealing it, you just don't want to get caught. Otherwise, you lose Dynasty reputation, which is here. So, I recommend going at least getting that bow. Now, if you're following some of my guides that I have uh, shared with, some of them will have downloadable uh, game saves. Now, those downloadable game saves do not work with console. I've actually talked with the devs and stuff, and that is not a transferable game save. I'm not sure whether console even has shareable game save between console. Um, that's something that I, I will have to uh, try and get answers to later on and, and get some of those answers out. But, uh, so like in, hang on, let me do this and this. So, this is the thumbnail for the, probably the most popular um, starter video that I've got right now. And I get a ton of comments this past week or so since console has started that the video is trash or it doesn't work or the locations aren't there when I go through the game and stuff like that. What I'm noticing is people are not paying attention to the fact that there is a game save download on that. Now I've gone into the descriptions I have put next to the download that this download is for PC only. Because, again, the game save downloads aren't transferable to console. So if you are on console, I recommend my 2,000 coins in the first day video. That's going to be more effective for you than trying to find these loot locations. The loot locations, so all of your abandoned camps, the busted carts, the logs on the side of the road, the rock piles with the shovels, uh, that have coins underneath them. All of those locations are random. They're random when they spawn. The location stays the same. But each season, you get a chance for those locations to actually spawn. So when you start your new game or multiple new games, and you're like, well, I don't have these same locations that NAS has shown in his video. It took me over 25 new game starts to even find that setup. <laughs> so that's why I made the download available. Now, unfortunately, it's only available for PC players. So on console, just remember, if you don't have those uh, same locations as in any of my videos that I've shown, they're random. It doesn't mean that they're not in your game because I've had those comments as well. Well, what if the console version is different than the PC version? There are going to be some differences between the PC and the console versions, but not necessarily what's in the game. What's in the game is what's in the game. Now, settings and things like that, those will change between console and PC. But the loot locations are all there. That's just random whether you get them on the first day, the next season, so on and so forth. Move that out of the way and get that down. Now, since we're kind of on these locations, let's do this. I am going to bring this into the screen. So on Steam, there is an interactive map available and it's free. Yes, free. And I'm going to show you how to get to it. So on Steam, with your Medieval Dynasty it doesn't need to be running, obviously. Mine is. You right-click on it, go to Properties. This little window is going to pop up. You're going to go to Local Files. You're going to go to Browse. It's going to open up a file on your computer. And it's the Medieval Dynasty file. 
Now, if you go through this file, you should, if you downloaded all of the DLC content, you should have this map pack content. You can double click that and you can see right here we've got interactive map. So if we click the interactive map, and let me minimize that, you're going to see that you have this page for the interactive map. It's got all the little dots and everything on it. Now, you'll see that this link is active. So you can, the, the cursor changes, you know, from the pointer to the, the little finger, letting you know that this link is active. So you can click that link and it's going to open up a different window for you. Now, at the top of the window, it's going to ask you to translate from German. Now, obviously, if you're reading in German, you can keep this, but I am not. So I'm going to translate it to English and it'll change all of the text to English for me. There we go. Now, you can see that it's got all of the animals right now pinged on the map. You can go over here to the right left hand side. You can go to the bottom and there's one a view all and a hide all. You can do hide all and then you can actually search the map for what you're looking for. So if you're looking for say a donkey, you want to go buy a donkey, it's going to show you that it's over in Tukey. If you wanted to go buy a horse, it's going to show you at the bottom of the map, it's over in Hornica. Only places you can get a horse. If you're hunting, uh, let's say you're hunky, hunting wolves, popular item to hunt. You can click wolves and it'll show you where all of the wolf spawn locations are at. So it's a really nice thing to have and it is free on Steam. Now, you don't necessarily have to do this. Uh, I believe there is the website that was at the beginning. Uh, the link that I clicked, you could type that website in and go straight to it. But I found it just really nice and easy to do that. So use, utilize the, the interactive map. Let me close this down here. If you go to the store page, so I'm on the Medieval Dynasty uh, game right now. If you click store page right below the play button, you can see they've got their little stream going. Kind of close that out so it's not right in the way. But if you scroll down to where content for this game, you see right here, map pack. And it is free. So feel free to take advantage of that free item. <laughs> it's going to come in real nice and handy to a lot of new players. Get this back off the screen here. Get that out of my way. All right, let me see about catching up on some of the chat real quick. Uh, let's see. Severin, what happened? Uh, I'm not sure what happened. <laughs> I haven't read chat in a little bit. Deal Soul, uh, good morning or good evening for you since it's night there. I appreciate you joining us. Uh, Ken, thanks for jo joining us. I appreciate it. Two Prince, good morning. Gaming Reflections, glad to see you. Made it on time for once. Good job, buddy. Uh, Noir, hunting deer with the spear uh, has worked out. Okay, well, that's good. Uh, typically, the wooden spear... Well, it's not typically. The wooden spear is the has the weakest damage to it. Uh, so I always recommend getting the bow because the bow is going to, I believe, triple the damage, if not more because I believe the standard bow is 30 damage plus the arrow which I believe the arrow is 25 damage stone arrow uh, so it's going to give do quite a bit more damage with the bow up over the wooden spear uh, let's see here outdoor oh, no, Corey uh, console is very tricky to s share save files yes okay I'm sure that they can be shared, but they're only shareable between console. They're not transferable between PC and console. That's where the issue is coming up for me because I play PC. I don't play console. Um, and there's not a uh, way to transfer. So on PC, people can get the game through Game Pass. Now, Game Pass has a different filing system on your computer than what the standard uh, Steam version has. 
Steam version is very easy to work with as far as transferring and sharing your files. Uh, Game Pass has a little bit of a um, backdoor you got to work through and then rename the file accordingly, and it, it can be a pain in the butt, but it can be done fairly easily. As far as going from PC to console, it's just not available. Or, or from console to PC, as far as the game saves. Hunted born deer with a spear. That's good. It's been a long time since I've used a wooden spear. I just remember when I first started this series, Season 5, trying the wooden spear. Um, it was very problematic, but I do know that the spear has the least amount of damage. You also, it's heavier, uh, and you have to carry usually will need to carry multiples otherwise you're going to be left without a spear because they can break easily especially on the larger game to where you have to use use them multiple times leon good to see you appreciate you joining us new to the game uh feeling it but it may be too complicated for my little brain <laughs> the medieval dynasty uh, can be very misleading at the very, at the very beginning. There is a lot to the game and a lot to understand. Uh, feel free to, to follow along with my videos and, and hang around. I try to answer as many questions as I can on, on my streams, on all of my streams, not just this one. Uh, it's just that I'm focusing this stream on trying to educate people and help them more with the game. Uh, let's see. Andy Brown, thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Most open world games with a static map end up having an interactive map appearing online sooner or later. Yes, uh, it does appear online sooner or later. But this one's available now. Underbashed. Hello from Scotland. Well, hello from Tennessee. I appreciate you joining us. Okie dokie. So... We've gone over the interactive map. Uh, I've talked about some of the chapter quests. Now, going back to the quest, you'll notice that the chapter quests do not have a expiration time period on them. However, if you go to like the story quests, now granted, I've already completed them. So <laughs> these do have time limits. Uh, unfortunately, I can't show you that because, like I said, I've completed them. But you'll find your time limits up in the top above the description. So where it says here, the description of Carpenter's Twilight, there would be uh, a yellow or red text or something right here letting you know that it expires in a certain amount of time. Now, most of the story quests, they usually don't expire for a few years as to where your side quests which I don't currently have any because they reset each season anyway in your log, but side quests that you would pick up from the various uh, villages around the map, those usually will have a two season time frame. So when you pick up a side quest, you have two seasons to complete it, unless it otherwise states differently. Uh, the challenges, so the King's challenges, those also will have an expiration period. So when you pick up a King's challenge from the Herald, again, open your journal, J to open your journal. You can go to the challenges. You'll see what's active because it'll have the exclamation point uh, right next to it. Check to see how long before it expires. Typically on the King's challenges, you have five seasons to complete the challenges. So you do have quite a bit of time. I know it can seem overwhelming when you do get a King's Challenge because it wants a lot of stuff or a lot of coin. Just remember you have five seasons to gather all of those items and you don't have to actually bring them to the Herald. You can have just the items in your resource storage and you can even tell your wife to go and tell the Herald the items are ready to be picked up. So you don't even have to leave your village to turn in the items for the King's Quest. Alrighty, let's go back up here. We were on... And if you're on longer day seasons, then it's going to take you that long to complete it. Unless you sleep the season after three days. So you can actually go to your bed if you've been in a season for three days. 
then you can go to your bed and you're going to have an option to sleep the season away. Um, after three days. Otherwise, if you have a 10-day season, 20-day season, 30-day season, whatever, then obviously you, you can go through and do those long days. However, I don't recommend going the full length. I recommend moving on with the chapter quests. Not necessarily the story quests or anything like that, but the chapter quests. So when you get to th chapter three, it says right here that you need to successfully flirt. You can complete this objective without having chapter three active. So you can, during your first season, you can start flirting. And that flirt will count. So when you actually get chapter three, flirting, the successful flirting will be checked off. Um, now, granted, your skill trees, if you're spending points in your skill tree, that will count as well. Completing the quest for the neighbors does need to be done during chapter three. I'm almost positive. <laughs> so uh, the, what this is, um, you can do side quests is all it is. So I recommend flirting during your chapter two. Go ahead and get your flirting done. If you can actually have a wife by the end of year one, I think you're doing fabulous. I recommend having a wife before, say, year three or four, because you have to have an heir in order con to continue once Rasimir passes away. And it takes 18 in-game years for your heir to be old enough once your heir is born, it takes 18 years. So if you say don't have an heir until year three, you've had you got three years plus 18 to where you can get to where you can play as your heir. Because your heir, your son, has to be 18 years old before you even get the choice to choose to play as your heir. Now, it used to be that Rasimir had to pass away before having the option to play as your heir. And the devs have actually put a new feature in the game a few updates back that allows you, once your heir is 18, you you can have a choice in the dialogue to choose to play as your heir. It's irreversible. So once you choose to play as your heir, you cannot go back and play as Rasimir later. Alrighty, so this next one. So chapter four wants you to construct a hunting lodge. The hunting lodge is good, but I think people are utilizing it, in my opinion, the wrong way. People are doing the hunting lodge. Chances are you're probably putting somebody in there to do the hunting for you. Don't do that. Have Rasimir do all of his hunting. You don't need a ton of meat for the few little villagers that you're going to be required by the end of this the, the chapter quest. Have Rasimir do his own hunting. Go out and do your own hunting, whether it's with a spear, a bow, or if you bought a crossbow, great. Do your own hunting. Have the person that's in the hunting lodge gather leather and feathers. That way you can have bags to sell you have feathers. It's going to be an, uh, almost an unlimited supply of feathers um, to make uh, arrows or bolts. You can actually sell the arrows or bolts for money. You're going to need money for some of the uh, some stuff in the game. It's just going to make it easier for you to buy certain things and certain weapons or tools or whatever. But also for the King's Challenges. The King Challenges typically require 1,500 coin or more for a lot of the quests that, that it's requiring coins. And this is an easy way to get coins. Uh, now granted, I do have the video I mentioned before, the 2,000 coins in the first day uh, video. It's in my Tips and Tricks playlist. That's going to go through and I show you basically making stone knives on your first day. And in that video, I was able to get enough stone knives to have 2,000 coins in the first day. This was before fast crafting was an option in the game. So 
with fast crafting on, you could easily get 3,000 coins or more in the first day just by crafting stone knives. Uh, so if you haven't watched that video and you're on console, that's the video I highly recommend for a starter video. Uh, not one of these videos that has you going out and finding these random loot locations because it's going to be just that. It's going to be very random on whether you get those loot locations or not. Alrighty. So, hunting lodge, feathers, and leather. Now, you will have to supply your, your hunter with a knife if you're having them gather leather, which I do recommend. Uh, you can just go and make, I don't know, 10 stone knives, throw them in the resource storage. That gets me to the next item. So I get a lot of thing, a lot of questions, not, not necessarily I, I come across a lot of questions on the Facebook. I do get them on some of my, uh, in the comments of some of my videos. Where do you put the items for your villagers to get them? If you highlight any item, let's go with the, uh, the iron axe that I have in my inventory right now. If you look right here in the description at the bottom of the screen, top right section is going to say resource storage for this item. That means this item needs to be in the resource storage in order for your villagers to acknowledge that they have tools to use and they will grab them from the resource storage. Yes. Every workstation has a storage. You can put items in there. Sometimes the workers will use them. Sometimes they won't. I recommend following this and putting them in the resource storage, utilizing the workstation storage strictly as an overflow. If your resource storage is full, your workers will only stop working once their workstation storage is full. If they have no place to put the items they're producing, they stop working. If they don't have a tool, they stop working. If the farmers don't have a bag and a hoe and fertilizer and seed, they stop working. So you want to make sure that they do have those items and they're in the appropriate location. Same thing with the food items. So a bucket of water is going to go in the food storage. An empty bucket, bucket with no water, is going to go in the resource storage, and it'll say so. Uh, matter of fact, let me get up, and we'll go to the resource storage real quick, and I can show you that. But I see the I see these questions all the time. You know, where do I put this, or how do my villagers get this? Um, so, this is a bucket, empty bucket you can see it belongs in the resource storage. Now, because we are at a storage uh, box here, it's going to change the color as well. So if I try and put flatbread in the resource storage, it's gonna be red. And it's gonna tell me, nope, flatbread does not belong in the resource storage. I have to go to the food storage to put it in. So they've actually color coded these, I believe with the most recent update, which is a really nice feature. Because that way, when you're in the storage chest and say, I'm going to put fertilizer in here, I know it's going in the right storage unit because it's green. So that's how you're going to know where to put the different items, even your coins, resource storage. And the reason the coins say resource storage, so when you turn in your, your quest for the king, they're going to want the coin in the resource storage. Now, if you're doing the uh, pay taxes quest at the, at the uh, beginning of spring, that coin needs to be in your inventory. <laughs> so you can still tell your wife to go pay it, but it, that coin needs to be in your inventory. King's quest items need to be in the resource storage. All righty, let's go back here. Let me catch up on some of the chat. tough in the first three years once you get your town going uh you have time to do uh more of what you want yes that is true what kind of pc am i using 
Um, I built my own PC, so it's uh, it's an i7. Uh, I want to say it's an 8000 series i7. It's not not super great, but it's not horrible either. <laughs> Uh, I definitely want to uh, upgrade uh, my PC, but I don't think that I'm going to be able to do that for at least another year. Uh, so we'll see how that works out. My, my kids are bugging me for a PC as well, so I think they're probably going to get this one, and uh, Dad's going to build himself a new one. Uh, let's see. Andrew, I did Deborah Quest in Chapter 2, which counts as helping... Uh, helping people but when I got to chapter three it didn't count right that's why I'm saying you have to do the quests required for chapter three during chapter three being active on console I have found leaf piles in the autumn and snowman in the winter that's not just on console that is also on PC uh, you can find random loot piles out in the wilderness sometimes around villages uh, you can also find snowmen same way, sometimes along the roadway, sometimes near villages. If you actually go to the leaf piles and the snowmen, uh, a lot of times you can interact with them and they'll have some kind of a um, loot item or coin or something in them for you to find. Uh, Outdoor Core, I'm on year four and awaiting the birth of my first child. Good job. Uh, let's see here. Jade Forrest, thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. Uh, let's see. My Raspberry got married at 20. So he in uh, sounds like year two because he's 18 when the game starts. Uh, was picky regarding the future, the future brides. Uh, either, <laughs> either they're ugly or bad stats. Okay. Understandable. I mean, you got to be picky. <laughs> Uh, let's see. How's your health, mate? Oh, well, my health is fine. Uh, Rasimir's health seems to be good. So I'm not sure whether you were talking about mine or Rasimir's, but either way, we're both good. Uh, let's see. How much would I charge to make, how much would I charge to make a PC? You don't want me to make your PC. <laughs> If you're paying somebody to make a PC, NAS is not your guy. <laughs> I would I would recommend going to one of those uh, PC building sites uh, and having them do it because chances are NAS might mess it up. Uh, I'll build my own PC only because I, I know what I can do, but I'm not going to build PCs for other people. That, that would not be good for me <laughs> or you. Will they increase the building limit again? I do not know. I don't anticipate them increasing the building limit unless they are going to increase the map size, but I could be wrong. They may increase the building limit later on, but as of right now, I don't see anything on the docket for uh, an increased building limit. Sigvar, also building one uh, in about a year. At the moment, it seems like a very good idea. Oh yeah, building PC. Yeah, I, I wanted to build one this year, uh, but I've got other expenses that need to be taken care of first, uh, like new tires on my, on my truck. So I don't want to slide all over the place when it's raining, uh, and I need to probably get that done within the next week or so because we are starting to get into our uh, rainy fall season, and, and my tires are practically bald on my truck. <laughs> Alrighty, so we talked about the location for your items. Uh, they're either going to go in the food storage or the resource storage. Now, I know that other people are going to say, yeah, but you could put them in the workstation storage. And that is true. But you may find that sometimes your workers will not recognize that those items are there. Uh, also, if you have workers that are not working, that is could mean a few different things. If they're literally just standing around, it might mean that they don't have the needed items to work, to do their job, whether it's the resources or the tools. 
So you want to make sure, again, to check your resource storage to make sure that your villagers have the proper tools uh, that they need and that they have the amount of resources required to do whatever it is that you've assigned them to do. Secondly, when you assign uh, a villager to a workstation, now granted, you can walk up to any workstation and use the signboard or you can hit in on your keyboard to go to the management screen or whatever it is on console. But go to your management screen. You can go and choose the particular building that you want. You know, let's say like the Smithy 3. Uh, you can assign your people there. You can assign an apprentice. When your children are 14, between the ages of 14 and 18, you can assign the children as an apprentice. Uh, this is a, a, a relatively new feature as well, because it used to be you could the children wouldn't do anything until they were 18. Now, once you've assigned your villager to a workstation, you have to assign them something to do. So you're going to click on the little hammer with the circle, and you're going to go in, and you're going to choose what it is that you want them to build or craft or, or whatever it is the building is, is allowing. Like in this case here, I have this person, uh, these people making iron sickles. I have them making these iron sickles to sell. That's it. I don't have my, I don't have my farmers using sickles. So you can change the intensity. So this is how many they're going to build in a day's time. I've got mine set just over five, and that's what I'm selling at the market stall as well. If they do not have an assignment set, so if, if all of these are at zero, then you're going to have the little things at the top of the screen pop up with a warning, top left of the screen. You can see a couple of them now. So the one with the hammer is typically workstation assignments. The one with the bag is your market stall assignments. So, and it doesn't necessarily mean that they don't have an assignment. It might mean that they don't have the needed materials. So if we go to my market stall, so we're going to open this back up. We're going to open services. We're going to go and find the market stalls with the little red icon next to them. So if I go to the resource stall, it says right here, no resources. So if we click on the bag, they don't have any wooden vials. I have zero in stock. So this is how many I have in stock of those items. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn that off because I had a stash of wooden vials. I've stopped production of the wooden vials. I just wanted them to sell what I had on hand. So now that they've sold it, I can turn that off. And then I can go to the other one, go to the assignments. You can see I had this one also selling wooden vials. I can turn that off. Then I can come back out of that. And the number two should reset and go away. So now you can see I have seven assignments that have warning issues on production. So now I can go, I can open up my management tab again, and I can find the ones that have warnings. So you can see I've got warnings here. So let's go to the production. This one here says it has no resources. This is going to be uh, my sewing hut. Again, no resources. I've got them making linen thread, so they don't have anything to make linen thread right now. They've used it all. So instead of turning this off, I leave it on because once my flax crops are uh, planted and harvested again, then they're going to have flax to make linen thread again. So I just leave that on and I deal with the warning signs. But you can see that they are working on simple bags. So when you have the little warnings up in the top left of the screen, it just means that, you know, there is an assignment that has an issue. For me, it's the linen thread. But that will fix itself when it's flax harvesting season again. Now, if you want to micromanage this, you can. You can go in, you can turn this off. That way you don't have any warnings on the screen. So um, that way you don't have to worry about it. I typically don't micromanage my villages. Uh, I have everybody doing their stuff. If they don't have materials, they don't have materials. They have to wait until materials are available. 
Uh, now, if I'm running out of materials constantly and it's something that can be adjusted, then obviously I'm going to go in and I'm going to try and adjust it to make everybody happy. But linen thread is not an issue for me uh, in, in this particular game. I'm currently in year 17 of, of my playthrough right now. Alrighty, so let's do this. Let's go back into the journal. Let's go to completed. We were on the hunting lodge, and then we changed up a little bit. So you get to the farm at chapter four. Now, I know a lot of people uh, have done longer day seasons, and they're trying to complete as much as they can in the first season. I would recommend, like I said, shortening your first season. This is my personal preference. You can do it however you want. Shorten your first season. That way you can get to chapter three and you can actually start advancing through this here. Um, it's, not, it's not a live or die situation if you don't get your farm planted the first season. It's not that crucial. Take the game slow. Uh, my season five, I've had a lot of comments on about episode three <laughs> to where I had already advanced quite a bit by episode three. Uh, I was even accused of cheating uh, on that in the comments on that video, which I haven't cheated. I've played the game for two plus years, uh, so or just over two years. So I'm efficient. Uh, it doesn't I don't have to do a whole lot of thinking about what I'm wanting or what I'm doing. I just put people where they need to go. I know what I'm looking for really quickly. So I'm just, I'm efficient at it. Uh, so it's <laughs> if there's a way to cheat in the game, I'm not really sure what it is other than using the settings to have unlimited weight or unlimited stamina. Those are the only ways I would know how to quote cheat in the game. But I don't necessarily call that cheating because it is allowed in the game. You're not manipulating the game any way that it's not allowed to be manipulated. Um, the devs put those in there for a reason because there's people that don't want to have to worry about the, the encumbrance. You know, so they do unlimited weight or they don't like the combat. They don't like to fight. So they have unlimited health. Uh, they don't want to have to worry about running across the map and having to stop and wait for your stamina to build up. So there's unlimited stamina. Play the game how you're comfortable playing and don't worry about what anybody else says is cheating or not cheating. Now, if you were making third party programs to manipulate the game, then yes, I consider that cheating. So <laughs> that's my take on it. And I'm sure everybody has a different take on it, but that's mine. But I want to let everybody know, take your time in the game. Um, I, I put my videos out to help people understand the game a little bit easier because not everything is detailed in the game. That being said, there is a knowledge tab. So if you look across the top of the screen right now, we're on the journal. Then you got the map and management and technology. If you go all the way to the end, there's one that says knowledge and it has everything listed in the game with a brief description of what it is or what it does. Uh, some of them will even have uh, a little, I can't find it right now. Of course, some of them used to have little videos. Yeah, here's one. Uh, so this is talking about houses. Uh, looks like they you might be recruiting a person here, but it goes through and it shows you a little video, uh, you know, of that particular event. So there is everything I'm sharing with you today is in the game for the most part. My stuff, I just go in depth. Um, I talk with the devs. I try to get more information. So that way everybody understands how things work in the game and on a deeper, a little bit deeper level. But utilize the knowledge tab. If you're lost on something, you can figure it out. I mean, it's it tells you all kinds of stuff. I mean, the damage of the arrows and uh, the crossbow, damage of crossbow. Uh, when you're talking about weapon damage, you actually take the bow, whichever bow you're using, and the projectile. 
and you add those two damages together, and that's the damage you get. That's the outcome damage. Uh, crit is a game is in the game, but it's only in the form of a headshot. If you get a headshot, headshots are double damage. Uh, so the higher the damage, the weapon and the projectile, the more damage you do on headshot because it's doubled. Alrighty, let's go back to chat here. Let me see here. Jade Frost, is it just me, but I keep seeing old worker ladies and extremely young dudes. Like lots of 27 to 30 females and 18 to 27 males. Got a 30-year-old woman, still single, could not find an old enough male for her. So... You can actually pair villagers together. So the male and the female, they will marry as long as they're within 20 years of age. So if you have a an 18-year-old, uh, let's say an 18-year-old male, and you have a 38-year-old female, they will eventually marry and have children. However, it might take longer because they are farther apart. But the uh, parameter for people marrying and having children together is 20 years of age difference. So obviously the closer they are in age, the sooner that they will marry and have children. Yes, temperance, 20 year, old age, 20 year age gap between them. Absolutely. Sigvar, show your love. Absolutely. If you are enjoying this, this live stream, definitely hit that like button. Uh, if you're new to the channel and haven't subscribed yet, please hit that red subscription button and that little notification bell. That way you're notified uh, each and every time I put up a live stream or a new video, which I haven't actually put up a new video in a little bit. I've been doing a lot of live streams lately, uh, so I'm hoping to get some more videos going here in the next few months. But for the meantime, I'll at least be doing trying to do a live stream a week. If not two, I'm trying to get to where I can do two a week. But absolutely hit that like button if you are liking these. If you're not liking it, hit the dislike button. Uh, leave me a comment. Comments are awesome. Uh, YouTube loves comments. Uh, let's see. In my opinion, if you're playing a single player game, uh, you're free to do what you want as long as you are having fun. Absolutely. Take your time. Have fun. Enjoy the game. Play it the way you want to play it. 56 watching, 24 likes. Definitely hit that like button. Uh, let's see here. Love your content. Keep it going. Uh, Elstrom, thank you. I appreciate that. I said Elstrom. Is that is that Ale or Allie? Allie Storm. If I pronounced it wrong, I apologize, but I appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Long Tom D. Hey, Hectic from the UK. Well, I appreciate that. And hello from Tennessee. Okie dokie. So let's actually do this. Give me just a second. Make sure of something real quick. doing this all right let's head over to the medieval dynasty official facebook group now there are actually two medieval dynasty groups that uh, i'm a member of and one is the medieval dynasty official group which is what you see on the screen the other one is the medieval dynasty group that is run by uh, sheared sheep gaming uh, both of those have really nice people there that are very helpful and stuff. So if you do have questions and you're on Facebook, feel free to pop into those, ask your questions, share your, uh, your adventures in medieval dynasty. You can also do the same thing in my discord. So you'll find the links to my discord, my Twitter, my Facebook, all of that good stuff. Buy me a coffee all down in the description of, of this video and every video that I've got on YouTube. You'll find those links there. 
Uh, but I've got a Discord with a Medieval Dynasty section to where you can come in there and you can leave me messages or whatever or ask questions and the people in the group will also answer those as well. Again, you can share your adventures, your you know your pictures of your villages and stuff, which I love to see. Uh, so many creative people uh, have joined the game over the past year or so. So it's really nice. But we are on the Medieval Dynasty official group. Uh, let's see here. So these are just, I'm literally going to scroll through some of these and we'll talk about uh, some of these little questions and stuff here. Hey guys, I'm playing for the first year. i uh, got a couple of questions. My first winter is coming and I wonder what I, what needs to be done to survive it. Uh, I got 25 cabbage growing. Will it last all winter? Do I need wood uh, to heat my house? Uh, what do I need to know to make it through? So there's quite a few questions here. So his first winter is coming. Wonder if he, uh, what he needs to survive it. He's got 25 cabbages growing. So the cabbages, that's kind of a tough question because I don't know what he's using his cabbages for. Is he just eating cabbages? Is he making meals with the cabbages and then obviously meat or whatever? Um, in this situation here, I would recommend that the cabbages be used for fertilizer unless he has pigs. Uh, if you have pigs, the pigs are going to make manure and the, your uh, barn worker can turn the manure into fertilizer. Um, which do you need first? Uh, well, you got to have fertilizer to even do the crops. You can buy you some pigs. So you can buy, I, I would recommend it, as soon as you get to the pigsty, buy you a male and two female if you can do if you can afford it. Um Make you some money. Follow my 2000 video first day. Uh, make you some coin. Uh, that needs to be your focus. That way you can actually buy some of the things that you need. Um, berries are great. Uh, grab as many berries as you can and then literally throw them on the floor and let them turn to rot. Now, you have to be careful when you throw them on the floor at season change, the berries will turn to rot. If you do not pick them up, the next season change, they'll disappear because the rot will go away. So you need to make sure to pick them up and either put them in the food storage for your barn worker to turn them into fertilizer or take them to the barn. You turn them into fertilizer yourself. Um, it takes 10 rot to make one fertilizer. So I would recommend picking some 2000 berries. That'll that'll net you 200 fertilizer. You'll have a, a, a nice little chunk of fertilizer and that way you can get you uh, quite a few crops going uh, during the seasons that, that they need to be going at. Uh, and then that'll give you a little bit of a push to get your uh, whatever food and, and crops going for you. Uh, cabbages is probably the second best way. So you could actually use berries to make fertilizer for some of your first crops. Try to make some of your first crops cabbage. Cabbage will net you the most rot when it rots. So you actually go and you'll pick your cabbage. You'll just throw it on the floor of the food storage. Uh, the next season it'll turn to rot. Cabbage gets you four rot per cabbage. So, and it's, somewhat random how much cabbage you get per cabbage planted. Uh, so there's, there's a variance between, I don't know, like four and six or, or three and five or something when you pick a cabbage. I haven't tested it in a long time. I'm not exactly sure what it is right now. I'm sure there's somebody that has done a chart somewhere uh, on the Steam site or on YouTube or something about that. 25 cabbage growing. 25 cabbage is quite a bit. Uh, so I think it all depends on how many people you have, whether your 25 cabbage is going to be enough, uh, and what you're using the cabbage for. Uh, let's see. Do I need wood to heat my house? Absolutely. But don't use just wood. Go out and get you some logs, turn it into firewood. This is the most efficient way to supply heat to all of the homes, not just yours. Um, so chop you some trees down, but be careful. Trees can hurt you now. Uh, so be very careful about that. Uh, and then turn that wood, turn those logs into, uh, firewood. Now firewood, I'm going to open up the game again here. Let's get back to the game. 
So if you go into the management screen, you can actually see your food demand, your water demand, and your wood demand over here on the right-hand side above the map. You can actually go to the wood demand, and there is a formula to figure out the wood demand. And you would use the same formula for the water demand and the food demand. And I actually have done a couple of videos on wood demand, and you can actually search, search up Hectic Nasari wood demand, and they should come up. Uh, but when you're doing wood demand, let me see if I can, let's do this. Let's go to my resource storage. Wait, do I have fire? I may have firewood even in my inventory because I'm carrying a bunch of stuff right now. No, I don't. Okay, so let's pick up this firewood. I, right now I've got my unlimited weight on because I've, I'm trying to clean up my stuff and I've got a ton of, as you can see, I've got 34,000 kilograms on me. <laughs> trying to clean up my, my storages and everything. But if we go to firewood, one firewood equals five wood. So when you're doing the firewood in the management screen, we go to... Where's that at? Extraction, shed, there. Here. Is that right? No. Where is woodshed. Firewood. Yeah, I even have that one listed. So when your lumberjack is making firewood, it takes one log to make four firewood. So that one log, if you turn that one log into firewood, it's going to be worth 20 wood. But if you use that log by itself, see if I have any logs in my inventory here. Yes. If you use that log by itself, it's only worth 10 wood. So you always want to turn that log into firewood. It doubles the wood amount that you get out of that wood. So keep that in mind when you're, when you're doing that. Also, if you go to... What is it here? Yeah, go to management. You can click on the little water apple log icon here, and it's the people's demand control. You can actually open up the wood items, turn off sticks, logs, and planks. Otherwise, your villagers will burn the sticks, the logs, and the planks if they don't have any firewood. So... I turn these off, that way they only use firewood. They will not use my sticks, logs, or planks to heat their homes. So definitely do that. So go to management, click on the little icon here with the log, the apple, and the water droplet, and you can tell them, say, look, only use firewood. You can do the same thing with your water items. You can tell them things, okay, I don't want them using my soured milk. I want to turn that into cheese eventually or something. So you can turn those off. Or if you don't want them utilizing, say, the vegetable soup, I only want them using the vegetable soup for food. You can turn off the vegetable soup. They won't use it for water items. You can also do food items the same way, you know, it's like, okay, I, the cheese, I don't want them using my cheese. I want to sell the cheese. So you can turn the cheese off. They won't eat it. All righty, let me catch up on some of the chat again. Games, thanks for joining us. Hope you're having a good day. Uh, new to the game uh, and this Steam Sub and like. I appreciate the sub and like. Thank you. Look forward to more content. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Poogie shot first. Uh, thanks for joining us. Hope you're doing well. Uh, just played this game for the first time last week. Uh, I'm glad it came to Game Pass and gave me the chance to play it. Great console experience so far. Good deal. Uh, let's see. Cora, don't forget clothes, fur stuff. Uh, yes. So, money. Get you some coin. Your first winner, have you some coin. <laughs> Plain and simple. The way to make it through the first winner are your clothes. Uh, and as you can see, I have on, you know, fur boots and I got the, the fur caplet. Of course, I've got the bag hat on. But you want to go to a seamstress 
uh, either in Branica, which is where I'm at, or you can go to Denica or Hornica because there's a seamstress in all of those. So Lubomira here, now granted she's got a quest, which we're not going to do right now, but we're going to go to Show Me Your Wares. I recommend for your first winter, buying the clothes you need. Because currently in the game, there's the only need to make and craft clothing would be one, if you wanted it for Rasimir, or two, to sell it. I don't do anything with crafted item, uh, crafted clothing in the game. I go and buy my clothing for Rasimir uh, just because it's easier. But you want to go through and you want to find the stuff that is fur. So you get the fur boots, the fur caplet, the fur hood. Now the caplet and the hood are worn in the same location. They're on your shoulders. Now I was asked a question about the fur hood. You cannot put your hood up as a hat. Hat is separate than, than the fur hood. The fur hood only covers your shoulders. Uh, let's see, you got fur shoes, and then of course you want a hat, and everything will have a heat protection and cold protection rating. So that way, if you're wearing your winter clothes in the summertime, you have a potential of having heat stroke. <laughs> so you want to wear, you do want to wear your clothes appropriate for the seasons. Uh, so obviously lighter, thinner, short sleeves for the spring and summer. Uh, even into fall, it's fine. But when it comes to winter time, you definitely want to have on your fur clothing. Uh, the hats, some of the hats do have differences in their um, heat, heat capability. So like this one here is 5 and 10, which is what I'm wearing. Uh, this one here is also uh, a plus 10 on heat protection. Uh, there's another plus 10 on heat protection. This is a minus five on cold protection from what I'm, and this is what you're currently wearing from what you're currently wearing. So keep an eye on those. Uh, you only have to have your heat protection and cold protections for the different months, uh, at a hundred percent. So if you go to inventory, go and you're on Rasimir, you can see down here, you've got your temperatures and stuff. So this is heat protection, the second line down here, and then cold protection. Right now my cold protection is at 100%. That's all that, that is required to make it through the winter time. And when I'm in summertime, then obviously cold protection would, you take that to 100% and have your heat protection, you know, as low as possible. Uh, after my first winter and freaking out, I upgrade all house with insulation. Yes, uh, having insulation on your houses helps with heat con or the wood consumption for heating those homes. Uh, having the insulation on those homes also uh, helps with villager mood. Uh, villager mood, having villager mood up, you know, as high as you can, is going to help with villager work production. Uh, let's see here. I've managed to... you managed to get hit by a fallen tree twice. <laughs> Mal Reaver, you got to watch out for those trees. They will kill you. Uh... <laughs> uh, I have a video from season my season four, uh, Death of Me. Uh, you probably just search up Hectic to Sorry, Death of Me, and it should pop up for you. Uh, this was before trees were actually supposed to damage you. I, yeah, I, there's a couple episodes there that where I had, uh, some fun with some trees over by Hornica. Uh, let's see. Outdoor Cory died a few times from fallen trees. I, yeah, I think it's going to happen quite a bit. It's a new feature in the game. Um, uh, so it's going to happen. Uh, temperate stick. If Rasimir and... If just Rasimir and no wife or child, though, the house has no wood demand. Correct. So if it's only Rasimir in the home, that home has no wood demand. Food or water. Because you're taking care of the player yourself. It's once you have inha other inhabitants in the house. So once Rasimir has a wife, Rasimir's house 
will have a wood demand for it. Mystery Man, thanks for joining us. Hope you're doing well. Why is intensity not at 100%? Because I don't want to produce 100% because it will burn up all the materials that I have and they will be done building their stuff way too soon. It will use resources that may be needed in other fashions. So you typically only want to uh, produce items as often as you need them produced. So it's, it's there, there, there's a reason why the intensity is there. So if you just set everything at 100%, uh, let's say you set uh, your uh, blacksmith to make iron arrows. Well, they would go and, and you set that at 100%. Well, they're going to take the feathers, they're going to take the sticks, and they're going to take the iron that it may, takes to make those iron arrows. And they're just going to produce iron arrows until there's literally no more materials left. Well, then, if that's the case, you're not going to have sticks to build some of your first buildings because they've used all of your sticks. Now you've got to go out and you've got to gather sticks. So you don't want to, you only want to produce what you need. That way you don't run out of materials. Because even if you have your lumberjack only producing sticks, there is still a cap on how many sticks they can produce a day. So that's why the intensity has that sliding scale for you to set so you don't burn up all of your materials making one item. Crazy? Absolutely. Yeah, you can actually survive the winter by just carrying a torch. Uh, there is an achievement for no clothes on and surviving a winter. And that's how you do it. Either stand inside the entire winter or carry a torch. Uh, but carrying a torch does warm you up. However, um, when you put the torch away, you get cold again. Got lucky on an adventure and found fur gear uh, for my first winter. I believe there may actually be a quest uh, that you get before your first winter that does give you some fur items. I don't know if that quest has changed or not, but I remember it from when I played Early Access. Sigvar, I literally just remembered uh, flying after you said hit, hit bike trees. Uh, yes. Uh, I I don't know if it was the same episode or the one uh, before the one I just mentioned, but if both of them were in season four. Uh, yeah, I was kicked up into the air. I landed. I think I had 10 health when I hit the ground. Um, and, and it was by a tree. It was, it was a bug. It's all been fixed. But that was before trees were supposed to hurt you. Won't that mean the workers don't won't will not do anything? Well, if you don't have any materials, they can't do anything. Uh, but if you set your your intensity low, that means that they're going to constantly work throughout their working period. But if you set it at one hundred percent, and then you run out of materials, then yeah, your villagers aren't going to work at all because they don't have materials. So. I don't know. Let me, let me see if I can explain this better. So if I am selling, let's go back to town here. Let's see. Let's check this guy here. Come on, step up there. What is this guy selling? Okay. So this guy here is selling six iron sickles. So I am, I'm producing iron sickles strictly for them to sell. And then this one here is also selling six iron sickles. I believe these, these are probably the only two that are selling iron sickles. So I need to be producing at least 12 iron sickles a day. 
just to sell. Otherwise, I'm going to have an abundance of iron sickles that is going to take up weight space in my resource storage. Also, it's going to utilize... Let me go back over here. It's going to utilize more iron than what I can produce to also make hammers, uh, shovels, pickaxes, and things like that. So they'll, they'll burn through my iron just to sell sickles, and I won't have any for hammers, shovels, pickaxes, uh, hoes, things like that. Then they won't be able to make those because I'm out of iron. And if I'm out of iron and I can't make those things, then my blacksmith won't have a hammer to produce any more tools or any more arrows because they do. I have some making arrows. Uh, my farmers won't be able to plant crops because they don't have a hoe. Uh, so th there's kind of a ripple effect that would happen. That's why you want to set your intensity to only what you need. Now, granted, if you want to set your intensities to 100% for whatever it is that you're producing, by all means, do that. Uh, just keep in mind that when you run out of materials or resources, they can't produce anything else until you have more of those resources. So there is, there is a ripple effect that happens when you start running out of materials because you're producing a ton of stuff. Outdoor core, I made that mistake with simple bags at 100%, ran out of leather fast, yes. So that's, I have my sewing hut making simple bags as well. Uh, now granted, I have them making an abundance of bags and then I have my hunters gathering leather and feathers. I actually don't have my hunters gathering meat at all. Uh, matter of fact, my village runs off of flatbread. Uh, now, granted, I'm going out and doing hunting and I put the meat in there and stuff. It turns to rot. Rot turns to fertilizer uh, or they turn rot into fertilizer. So, um, yeah, definitely be careful setting your intensities to 100 percent because you can definitely get in trouble very quickly um, because you you can run out of whatever resources they're using to produce whatever it is that you have set at 100 percent. Uh, Red Gal, the quest that rewarded clothing was on early access and is not in the game anymore. That's what I wondered um, because I did not remember seeing it when I started season five. Um, so that's good. But I guess maybe uh, there could be clothing items at some of these camps or in some of these chests, uh, you know, that maybe if there's not a reward for clothing for our side quests it would be nice to have that added into the game as a random not necessarily required before the first winter or anything lisa king thanks for joining us hope you're doing well uh let's see i think i think of intensity as the speed your villagers work uh intensity is yes it it, it does affect the speed they work because it affects how many of an item they produce in a day's time. So the intensity is listed as items per day. So if we go into here, go into here, so you can see I've got this particular uh, building making a lot of tools. But the intensity, you can see right over here, total and in parentheses is 1D for one day. So they make 1.28 fishing spears per day. Uh, granted, I could probably lower that because I don't think that they utilize and break 1.28 fishing spears a day. But again, that's something you play with, with what your villagers are doing, whether it's the pickaxe, the hammer, the iron axe, or the hoe, or whatever tool it is. Uh, and then, as you can see, I do not have the uh, sickle, the iron sickle. Where is it at here? They are not producing the iron sickle at this building. I have a completely other blacksmith set up that all they do is produce iron sickles. That's it. And I can adjust their intensity as to how much materials I have in my resource storage or I'm gathering. 
You can also change how much uh, iron your mine workers are gathering as well. Uh, now, usually uh, early on, I have a lot of my resource gathering set to 100%, especially on logs and sticks, and then of course, stone as well. Um, that way I have materials that I need to build basic buildings. Edgecomb, thanks for joining us. Uh, if you run out of tools and the workers aren't working for a while, will their mood go down? If your villagers, if your villagers don't have resources, I don't think the mood drops. If they don't have an assignment, the mood will drop. If they don't have a workstation, the mood will drop. If, they, if you have children that reach the age of 18 and you don't move them into their own house, the mood will drop. But will they just idle uh, as long as they have food and water? They're going to idle anyway. If, as long as they have food and water, they're going to idle. If there's nothing to do with their workstation, they're going to idle. So they're going to stand there, lean against the post or wall, uh, sweep the floor, you know, they'll do idle work until you, you know, make the tools available to them or make the resources available to them. Uh, let's see. The strange deer statue permit to unlock a mission is the strange piece from your son. Unlock a mis hidden mission two. Right now, the only hidden, so-called hidden mission is the deer figurines in the clay behind Sambor's house. You have to have one of those in your inventory and then go back and talk with Sambor. It'll start a uh, secondary quest line with Sambor. Uh, but as far as uh, the strange deer figurine or the strange deer statue i don't believe it starts a quest as far as i know at least i haven't seen it uh there's also a strange coin in the game that can be found uh i have not heard or seen how it plays into the game or into a storyline or anything else yes there's absolutely clothing items in the camps uh possibly other treasure spawns I know for certain in the abandoned camps or bandit camps, though. Yeah, I've seen... I don't know that I've seen clothing in any of the camps. I've seen bags. So like the cloth bags. Obviously, I've seen weapons, food, mead, coins. I don't remember coming across clothing yet. Now, I'm not saying just because I haven't come across it, it doesn't mean it's not in the game. Uh, and I by no means have found all of the random locations on the map either. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure on mood dropping if kids over 18. Yes. Uh, I do know that for a fact because I've actually questioned that with the devs. So if your child is living in their childhood home with their parents and they reach the age of 18, the longer they live in that house, each year their mood will drop. Uh, if you do, if you put them into their own home, then their mood will continue to increase. And then obviously you put them with a husband or a wife and their mood will increase. Uh, when they again have children, their mood will increase. But if they stay in the home with their parents, the mood will drop of them and the parents. Uh, and eventually, once your villagers get to negative 100% mood, they will leave your village. Killmonger404, thanks for joining us. How many days are your seasons? I have five-day seasons right now, but I typically sleep at the end of day three. So that's something else. If you guys haven't noticed, um, at the campfires, 
you have the option to hold E on PC and then you can sleep the next day. You cannot sleep the next season at a campfire. You have to be in a bed. And it does not have to be your bed. It just has to be any bed. So this is this is not Rasimir's house. This is just a random house. If you go to the bed and hit the E, you get the option over here for sleep the next season. Now you can see in the center of the screen, I can't do it for another day and two hours. <coughs> Excuse me. You have to spend three in-game days during a season before you have the option to sleep the season away. Otherwise, you can just sleep the day away. Now, you can't sleep the day away until, what is it, after 1800, I think? 1900. So I've got two more hours and a few minutes before I can sleep. So at 1900, then you can sleep the day away. Or if you have the option to sleep the next season, you can do that as well. Different trigger. You have found hats and hoods in Camp Season 5, I think. Oh, you know what? You're right. I have found hoods. Now, the hat... I have not found hats. I did find a hat off of a bandit. Uh, one of my first bandit raids that I had uh, in Season 5, I got one of my hats off of that. Matter of fact, it's, it's not the one I'm wearing. Let's hop the fence. Let's run up to my uh, my house real quick. And I can show you which one that I... I think it's the hat with lapels that I found. And I got it off of a bandit. Uh, but I do remember finding a hood. I probably found a hood a couple of times. Uh, at the abandoned bandit camps. And I believe it was usually some of the larger ones that had a lot of loot. Uh, let's see... Yeah, hat with lapels. This was the one that I got off of the bandit. Uh, and that was... Oh gosh, that was, I don't know, episode six or seven or something like that. I ran into a, a random bandit camp and yeah, I got a hat with lapels and I kept it. Uh, let's see. Uh, I've got to try and catch up on some of the chat here. Red Gal, you've gotten trousers, fur caplets, noble boots. Oh, the noble boots. Yes, I do remember noble boots because the noble boots are actually uh, at the waterfall busted cart. Not the camp. There's a busted cart that can spawn right next to where the abandoned camp spawns at the triple waterfall. And the noble boots are part of that busted cart. So you are right. Thank you. Caps, coifs, uh, though various camps over several save files. Best in for the wiki. Nice. Uh, let's see here. Jonathan Hip, thanks for joining us. Hope you're doing well. Two questions. First, do the villagers age and pass away? Yes. Second, uh, any way to change total number of buildings on console i i can only show you on pc i don't know how it is set up for console but it should be set up close to the same way so if you go into your uh menu and go to customize game right below taxes is building limit and you can change this building limit to whatever you want between zero and 200%. Uh, default is 100%. Now, if this is not on console, I, I, I don't know what to, to do for you. I don't know if that changes or not. However, you can go onto the top lit's Discord or on the Steam and pose the question there. Because um, there's, there's almost always somebody that will be able to answer that question. But because I don't play on console, there's going to be some things that I'm not privy to um, but this is how you typically get in to change your game settings is to go into the game menu go to customize game and then you can change different things you can change your taxes the building limit the events on whether it's on or off you can turn on or off your unlimited health and stamina hunger 
thirst, uh, the unlimited carry weight. You can turn poisons on and off. You can even turn the temperatures on and off. Uh, so that way you don't have to worry about what clothes you're wearing uh, during the winter and summer months. Uh, you can turn on and off fast crafting. Um, and all of these all of these items are will take place immediately. Right here, they apply instantly. Uh, and then you probably will have another section that applies after season change. Now again, on console, I don't know if it's there or not. Um, but you, have, you can change the length of days. Uh, the inhabitants, you know, food, water, wood needs, whether bandits are on and off, uh, you know, enemies, uh, health points and how much damage they dish out. Uh, those all take place after the next season change. Noir, I had no idea you could sleep in a different bed. Uh, I would run all the way home. You do not have to sleep in your own bed, whether it's for the evening or to sleep the season away. You can sleep in any bed as long as it's not occupied. Okay, temperance, uh, let's see, any time from over the age of 60, okay. Villagers pass away, okay, so you're, uh, temperance, you're an answering Jonathan Hip's questions and not on console yet. Okay, so temperance says that uh, any way to change the, the total number of buildings on console, uh, temperance is saying that, that on console you cannot change the total of buildings as of yet. Um, so that's good to know, because I did not know that. Killmonger, I'm new on Xbox. Where is the best place to follow the devs and get info on the game? Do they have a Discord? Yes, they do have a Discord. Uh, matter of fact, let me get you the Toplitz Discord uh, invite link, and I'll post it in uh, the chat there. So this link is only good for seven days. Minimize that. Go to here. And we'll paste that. There's the top lit Discord in the chat window there. Um, so you can actually go over there. They have a, a section for most of the games that they produce and they've got a medieval dynasty section over there you can feel free to post your bugs your suggestions uh you can even share with the community over there uh your adventures as well Uh, let's see, just catching up on some of the chat because it's starting to get a little bit of a way from me here. Happy Flow TV, thanks for joining us. Uh, how many outposts do you have? I have five villages and then I have a sixth location in the center of the map with my builder's hut. I can show you that in the maps. So you can see I've got one here in the north center. I've got one here at the river split. I've got one here at the lake in the center of the map. Uh, and then I've got another one over here to the right, uh, of, or excuse me, east of Gustovia. That's my fishing uh, village. And then over here, just southwest of Hornica, I've got my animal village as well. Um, I believe my episode... Season 5, episode 50, uh, is a village walkthrough of my current villages at the time. All five villages are active at that time, so if you wanted, if you're on PC, you can download that game save and actually walk through my villages. Unfortunately, on console, you can't do that. Uh, I am, I'm getting ready to share another uh, game save, 
probably in the next few episodes, I would imagine, uh, because there's been a lot of changes. Uh, so at episode 50, my Lumberjack Village, which is uh, right here south of Denica, was actually further south. It was actually along this little area here. Uh, and I ended up moving the entire village back up here uh, because I liked this area a whole lot better for my Lumberjack Village. Uh, so there's been a few different changes since my episode 50, but I will make that game save uh, available. I will do another walkthrough uh, when I make that game save available as well. Yeah, Red Gal, I don't believe the build limit is customizable on console. Yeah, that was uh, Temperance uh, had mentioned that before as well. Uh, Killmonger, loving the game, but Xbox has too much pop-in. I'm not sure what pop-in is. Hope they fix it uh, with an update soon. I would imagine if there are issues uh, that have been shared with top lists that they are starting to address those. Uh, I've already seen uh, a couple of little hot fixes come through uh, since console went live. So, <coughs> excuse me, I gotta take a drink. Lee, thank you for joining us. Hope you're doing well. You have both PC and console. Good job. I uh, I played PC. Excuse me. I played console years ago. Um, gosh, 12, 15 years ago is the last time I played console, and I went from console to PC, and it was a world different change for me. And I haven't been back to console. My kids have consoles. They they've got the the PS4 and they've got the Switch, and I've tried playing some games with them on console, and it drives me nuts now. <laughs> so I stick with PC. Uh, Outdoor Quarry, yeah, the only way to allow more buildings is to raise a rep through the quest on console. That's how you actually increase the... Uh, amount of buildings that you can currently build in the game is by raising your reputation but there is a max limit to what you can build apparently uh, there's not a sliding scale like the PC has for uh, raising the building limit like I currently have mine at 200% uh, I'm assuming that console is set right now at 65 um, which would be the default setting for PC Uh, let's see, Jonathan Hip. Um, I have to say, your guides are very informative. Well, thank you. Yours was the first one I ever watched. Well, I appreciate that. Lucas, good to see you. Appreciate you joining us. Hope you're doing well. Uh, let's see, Action WD. Appreciate you joining us. Does Rasimir get experience for work done by his villagers? Yes and no. So experience is, is a very generalistic term. So Rasimir will get experience for skills. And only Rasimir can gain this experience to level up these skills. So whether it's extraction or hunting, farming, diplomacy, survival, and production, Rasimir has to do all of the items to gain the experience for the particular skill point or that skill set. <clears throat> However, if you go to the technology tab, this is where Rasimir and the villagers contribute. So Rasimirs and villagers, can, they're building, they're crafting, they're uh, excavation. Those are the co uh, contribute to the technology. So Rasimir and the villagers are for technology Skills, only Rasimir. Uh, 
Oh, pop in is where you can see the game assets load in. Oh, I see. Yeah, that that sounds to me like it's it's going to be an optimization thing. Again, I, uh, uh, Killmonger, I would suggest going over to that Toplitz Discord uh, and expressing your concern if you haven't uh, already. Uh, the Discord is probably one of the better places to go to put any issues up uh, because the devs, there's a lot of devs and a lot of employees and stuff over there that are on the Discord and they can see that. They can either answer the question for you almost right away or they can at least pose the issue to the correct dev team that needs to see it if it's truly an issue or they can help you work through some of your settings uh, as well to, to help alleviate some of that. Zoth, first time and won't be my last on your live, man. I appreciate that. Uh, again, if you guys are liking these, definitely hit that like button. Uh, definitely goes a long way with YouTube. Real deal. Noticed you hit 1 million views recently. Congrats. Well, I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, about three weeks ago, uh, my channel actually hit 1 million views, which is, is very cool for me. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I saw that notification come across, and and that it's pretty exciting to hit those those mini milestones. Uh, my next milestone with YouTube is ten thousand subscribers, which I'm I'm creeping up there. Uh, I'm almost to six thousand right now. Uh, what do I have? I got fifty seven. Oh, I don't have that screen up to where I can actually see it. I want to say I've got. 5,700 or 5,800 uh, subscribers now, so I'm getting I'm getting pretty close. It's pretty exciting. Alrighty, let us go back to the Facebook. Let me see if I can find that and do this. Since we've only done one Facebook thing, there's been a lot of questions. I appreciate you guys having these questions. Uh, let's see here. Can anyone make a quick map that shows where the uh, iron mine could be? I'm year two and only found uh, copper north side of the map. Again, the interactive map that I showed earlier uh, is, is going to be the way to do that. We can bring this into the screen. Again, you can go to your library, go to, if you're on Steam, go to Medieval Dynasty, right click, go to properties, uh, go to local files click the browse button it's going to open up a folder on your computer again this is if you're on PC and you can see the map pack content this is free in the Steam uh, matter of fact you can go to the store page scroll down here you can see the very bottom option is map pack and if you look all the way to the right it is free uh, so I would recommend uh, if you're on Steam to go and grab that map pack and add it to your collection because it's going to be a handy dandy little tool. Uh, and then when you're on that file, you double click the interactive map. It's going to pop up. And then there's a link right here. It's an active link. You can actually click on that link or you can copy the link, write it down. You can type it in and it'll take you to... Uh, that particular site. The site's going to ask you because it's going to be in German when you open it. You can translate it to whatever language that you want and then hit translate button and it's going to translate the page to whatever language you chose. And then you have the interactive section over here on the left. There's two buttons at the bottom. You can view all, which really clutters up the map, or you can hide all and then choose what it is that you're looking for. So like if you're looking for wolves, It'll show you all the wolf spots. Uh, it'll show you bears. If you're looking for bears, it'll show you all the bear spots. Uh, it'll show you where to get pigs. You get pigs over here. And roll Nika. Uh, if you're looking for cows, show you where to get cows. So it's a, it's a really nice interactive map. Uh, if you're looking for the caves, like the question on Facebook there, you go down here to other where it says caves. And it shows you there's only five cave locations on the map, but there they are. 
So at least that way you can kind of figure out where to go. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and close that out. We'll close that out. We'll minimize that. We're going to close that. I think I had a bunch of stuff open. Um, if we go to the game again, we go to map. So with your map, you can, as far as animals go, so you can see I've discovered quite a few animals on my map, but you can't actually choose wolf and have it just highlight wolf. That's where the interactive map is going to come in real handy. But you can go to the hunters. There's two ways to actually discover the animal spawns. You can travel the map, because traveling the map, you'll notice it pop up in the top left corner that you discovered whatever animal spawn location you're nearby. Or you can go to the hunters and actually buy the maps from the hunters. Uh, matter of fact, let's do this, and I'll show you how to buy them from the hunters real quick. I'm going to get out of my village here, and we'll go grab the medieval uber. Let me drink and eat real quick. Oh. We'll head over to uh, Tutki because there's a hunter in Tutki and there's also one in Lesnica. So Raymond is the hunter in Tutki uh, and Gisela is the hunter in Lesnica. Both of those hunters will have an option in their dialogue to actually purchase hunting maps. Let me get over here and I can show you that. If I can find Raymond, he is actually a vendor with the bow sign above his head here. So if we go and talk with Raymond. Uh, let's see. Have you heard anything interesting? Where can I find? And then you go to wild animals. So let's let's go back. So when you first open this up, there's the show me your wares. You can buy stuff from him. Or you can go to where can I find and then go to wild animals. And then you can actually choose what you're looking for, whether you're looking for mammals, birds, or fish. We're going to go to mammals. And this is where you're going to buy the map. So if you wanted to say find wolf. So for 3,000 coin, you could buy the wolf map and it will, it will open up all the wolf locations on your map. You're looking for fox. Do the same thing. Now you can see they all have different values, all the way up to 5,000 coin for the bear. Um, now, these are cool to have. As far as I know, there's no achievements for owning all of these. <laughs> but you don't have to leave the game to see them. Otherwise, you can go and utilize that interactive map uh, and find them yourself. Can we see your diplomacy tree? Well, absolutely. Go back here. Let's get back out of that. Thank you. Farewell. Take care. Take care. Whoops. Let me push the wrong buttons first. All right. Let's go to skills and diplomacy. So that is my diplomacy skill tree right now. Awesome news on the on the million views. Well, I appreciate it, Gaming Reflections. Soth, you have to level and get the mining perk. Yes, yeah, so it's the skills, perks, however you want to see that or figure that. I Early on, no matter which skill set you're looking at, I highly recommend you put three points into the knowledge portion. This is going to help you gather uh, these other skill points a whole lot quicker. Then once you've maxed it out to 10, you can actually go and take a potion of possibilities, and, which you can actually craft in the uh, herbalist hut, and it'll erase all of your skill points and give them back to you. That way you can reallocate uh, 
your skill points because once you've once you've leveled to 10 in any of the skills you don't need three points in extraction knowledge so you could actually utilize those somewhere else Lazy91 Bravo, thanks for joining us. I hate where I live. I just noticed the rain has turned to snow. <laughs> it sounds sounds like you might live in the mountains or it might be wintertime. Um, you can always move your village. Um, I've done that many a times over my last several series. Veticus Rex, thanks for joining us. Uh, yes, mine is a cave upgrade to discover iron. Absolutely. Uh, so you will not be able to access iron in the caves until you actually build the mine in the entrance of the cave. The mine is a building just like your barn, your resource storage, so on and so forth. Uh, but you also have to get to that. Uh, is that is that under building? Yes. So you have to have 5,000 points in building technology to be able to unlock the mine. If you need iron before you have access to the mine, you have to buy it. And you can buy iron from the blacksmith in, let's see, I think it's Teobalt in Lesnica and Jan in Hornica are the two blacksmiths. Daniel, I built on the shoreline south of Branica. Really nice spot. Nice. Yeah, I uh, my very first season, I built down there. And then I ended up moving across the river. Uh, so my very first... Let me zoom in here. My very first season in Medieval Dynasty back during Early Access, uh, or excuse me, my very first series... I built in this location here, right below Baranica. Uh, now, Daniel built below Branica, so he it sounds like he's built down here, which is which is a little bit nicer area. But I had started over here, um, right next to this roadway. I had some rocks and stuff that I just could not get rid of in the game, so I ended up moving my village over here. Now this village here, or this location here, I featured in my very first uh, best build location video. To this day, this is still my favorite spot uh, for me. I, I like it. It's it's close to several of the little villages. It's right along the river. It's got a ton of trees. Uh, there are boar back here to hunt here and here. There's deer over here to hunt. Uh, you know, you could actually, I had room, I made room back in here for my farming plots and stuff. Although there is nice space over here for farms as well. But this, this is my, my number one spot, but I have not built there since my, uh, uh, series one playthrough. I've tried to build in different locations with each series. That way I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing more of the map. And as you can see, I really haven't built in the center of the map except for this location here. Now this lake is a very popular location to build. Um, I see a lot of people building on this side of the lake, uh, which is a, a lovely spot, but uh, the lake itself is just a really beautiful area to build. All right, let's see here. Amy Reflections, you can take the horse on the Wagoneer. Just stay on the horse when you speak to the Wagoneer. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. Good to know. I'll have to try that. Uh, let's see. Sai, uh, for those curious, the link for the map that NAS just showed works on mobile. That's good to know. I did not test it on mobile. I know a lot of folks are watching this on mobile. Um, I just, I don't do a whole lot with my phone when it comes to videos and stuff. Only, 
only when I have to. <laughs> Which will be helpful for me on console. I, I think having it on mobile will be helpful for, for anybody. Uh, now, granted, I'm fortunate enough to where I have a dual monitor set up so I can have, you know, informative stuff on one screen and then the game on the other screen. Uh, you know, I know not everybody has a dual monitor set up. So then uh, alt tabbing, if you're on the PC, alt tabbing to change screens can be a pain in the butt. So having the interactive map on your cell phone, if you can do that, uh, I can see that being helpful for, for many folks. Shane, hello. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're doing well today. What is the best clothing for all seasons? Something I can wear all the time if there is any. Um, as long... I don't know that there really is. At some point, you may find that you're going to either have to add or take off something because you're either going to get too hot or too cold. Um, so there's, there's, as far as I know, there's not really a generalized, this is what you can wear all year long. Um, because the, typically the fur items, typically the fur items are more obviously geared for more for your winter. And then like the short sleeve or linen options are more for your spring summertime options as well. But everything has a heat protection and a cold protection listed on it. Uh, so, and then your heat protection and your cold protection is listed underneath Rasimir uh, over here on the right hand side. So, I would say, I would say if you could get those maybe at 50% on both of those, then that might work okay. Um, and then if you're too cold in the, in the wintertime, you could pull your torch out. So, I mean, that is an option. But that might be something you kind of have to play around with. Um, I don't, I haven't bought all of the clothing items in the game, and I really haven't tested or checked that. I've just, I've gotten used to putting all my winter clothes in the wintertime. Now, the only time I do change clothes is for the winter season. Once I put on my spring gear, that's what I wear spring, summer, and fall. So that might help you as well. Uh, let's see here. Just started this game and it's so good. Currently on year four. Good job, Shane. Uh, let's see. Was playing the game and completely missed the interactive map. Oh, well, no worries. <laughs> well, it's there. You can definitely get it. Uh, let's see. I think it's the best spot, True, Talking about the spot that Daniel mentioned earlier. Giant Mitten. Yeah, the leather gloves are kind of big. Uh, let's see. Nas, do you think devs will add more combat combat events like raids or stuff like that? I don't know because they usually keep stuff close to the vest as far as what they're putting out. Now, there is a uh, roadmap that is currently set for next year. There's only a couple of items on it right now but they have like a an armor and shield i believe update that is slated next and then co-op is slated after that but both of those items are slated for next year whether they're going to have raids um i don't know i would like to see more bandit activity because uh, currently when you run into bandits, they have their own spawn locations and they pretty much stay in that spawn location. And even if they chase you, they will leash. So you can actually back up far enough to where they turn around and they run back to their camp. Um, I, I It would be nice to see that if you actually had bandits uh, enabled in the game that they could potentially... Uh, yeah, raid your village. Uh, I would like to see that in the game. Uh, that would, you know, would require 
the use of um, the palisades, you know, to help protect your villagers and stuff. But if they're going to raid the village, then there's got to be a mechanic in the game to where your villagers will, you know, call to arms kind of thing uh, and help defend the base uh, or to help defend the village. I think that there would be at least a watchtower building that would be required uh, for that as well. That way you could actually have a villager assigned at, uh, to watch duty. Now, that being said, we automatically have a villager that walks your village at night. They just automatically, they have a torch and they patrol the village. But the it's not an assignable position. It's just random. That character does this job. That's it. Um, but they don't, but they're not protecting the village from anything. Wolves, aggressive animals, bears, uh, Wysant will not attack your villagers. Um, they will only attack you. So, yeah, I, I would like to see that mechanic enter the game. Uh, I think it would be fun. Uh, let's see, Alexis, uh, thanks for joining us. Hope you're doing well. Uh, let's see, say a question. Have you had issues being able to spread fertilizer on your field? N no, but I personally haven't had to spread fertilizer on my field in s several in-game years. <laughs> my, my farmers are doing that, but no, I haven't noticed that they've had any issues. Uh, for some reason, my playthrough isn't allowing me to do so. Um, wondering if it's a bug. I'm not sure whether it's a bug or not, but, um, let me go back to my village. I need a ride. We're going to go to Branica cause that's closest. Um, you need to make sure that if you are spreading fertilizer one, you need to make sure that you have fertilizer in your inventory if Rasimir is the one that's spreading it, you also need to have a bag uh, equipped as well. If, it, if the bag is not equipped, you can't access the crafting wheel in said bag. Let me run in here real quick. And let's grab a bag. And I think I got fertilizer in my inventory already. So we'll open that up. Uh, let's see. Where's the bag? Bag. There it is. You want to make sure to highlight the bag and then obviously put it into uh, a quick slot. Then you can take that bag and equip it in your hand. You can see I've got it in my hand right there. And then you can open the crafting wheel, which will do the field. And then you have fertilizer down here. As long as you have fertilizer in your inventory, which I do because I've been trying to sell off a lot of my excess uh, fertilizer because I got a ton of weight in my resource storage. But you have fertilizer there. You can choose that and then you can plant it in your field. Now granted, I can't plant it because I don't have a field in front of me. But if you had a field in front of you, once you chose the fertilizer, then you could plant it. If you're having an issue doing that, then definitely go to the uh, Toplitz Discord, go to the Medieval Dynasty section to where uh, you can report some of the bugs and issues and mention that there. There's almost always somebody in the Toplitz Discord that can help you with that issue. Sometimes it may be a setting situation. Other times it may be an actual bug that needs to be reported. Uh, let's see, Shane, any way to have villagers take food automatically from the food storage? They should automatically be taking food from the food storage as they need it. Um, so at the food storage. If your villagers are hungry, then they should be removing items from the food storage anyway as long as you have them in the food storage for them. If there's no food in the food storage, obviously they can't take it. Also, if you go uh, to the management screen, go to this little icon right here, people's food demand, 
you can choose what they can and cannot consume for food, for water, and for fire, for wood, for heating their homes. Um, you know, like right here, I've got the bucket of soured milk checked off. That way they can't use it. But everything else they can access, if it's in the food storage, they'll access it when they are hungry. Or if it's uh, a water item, uh, like buckets of water, they'll access it if they are thirsty. If yours are not accessing it and they are saying that they need food or water, then that might be a bug of some sort. Otherwise, you need to make sure that they have a house assigned. If they do not have a house assigned, then they can't access your food storage and your resource storage. Uh, let me catch up on some of these here. Uh, outdoor court. If they allow bandits to attack, they should give us a barracks first. Um, I don't know whether you really need a barracks. I'm not sure that barracks would have been... Um, a time period piece, a time period building, uh, but I believe a like a watchtower would. Um, but I, I agree that I mean there's some buildings that would go along with uh, allowing bandits to attack. But we'll have to see what the what the next update next big update brings because the next big update is supposed to be the the armor and stuff. Which seems to me that they're that that might be gearing towards uh, bandit raids and stuff like that. I, I hope so. I really do. If bandits came and looted your village, uh, would be cool and maybe some simple weapons for villagers. Yeah. Uh, again, um, your hunters right now are the only ones that are using so-called weapons, uh, and it's the knife. So your hunters are. are <laughs> are real manly men because they're out there hunting with the knife. However, if you actually follow your hunter out in the field when they're hunting, you'll see them pull a bow out. They'll actually pull a bow and shoot a deer, but and they only pull the knife out when they're skinning. But the only tool required for your hunter is the knife. Uh, so I do hope that they require a bow and arrows for your hunters to actually hunt meat and stuff. Uh, I wish that they would change that and have the bow and the knife be required for the hunters. But right now, just your hunters only require knife. Catherine, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Hope you're doing well. Vaticus, thank you for all the tutorials, Nass. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching. I mean, if you guys weren't watching, I probably wouldn't be here having a live stream today. So, <laughs> thank you. Uh, let's see here. Oh my goodness. I'm so behind on chat. Uh, let's see, Catherine, don't villagers take food from their own home first? Uh, food should be in the food storage, not the home. So if you're putting food in your home storage or any house storage, it's actually going to deteriorate faster than if it was in the food storage. All food in the food storage deteriorates the least in the food storage. So if it's in your pocket, if it's in another storage unit, uh, so the resource storage or a house storage or workspace storage, it's going to deteriorate much faster in those other storages. So I highly recommend putting all of your food in the food storage. It'll last longer. Think of your food storage as your refrigerator. Also, I, I mentioned this early in uh, 
early in a video, every item in the game is going to tell you where it belongs. So I'm currently accessing the food storage chest right now. And I've got the fertilizer highlighted. If you look down here, it says resource storage in red. It's red because I'm in the food storage. So fertilizer doesn't belong in the food storage, so it'll be red. If I highlight the flatbread, you'll see that it says food storage and it's green. So that means that the food storage is supposed to go, or the flatbread is supposed to go in the food storage. So if I was in the resource storage and had flatbread highlighted, it would be red. So you want to make sure that, that you're checking the items and where they actually go down here. So it'll tell you where everything belongs in the game. I'm going to go and sleep the night real quick. What am I on? I'm on day two, right? Yeah, I'm on day two. So I can, I'll can i sleep here at the fire, light it, sleep, next day. <coughs> Alrighty, let's see. Let's catch up on some more of the chat because I've got quite a bit that I keep... You guys are, are asking a lot of stuff. <laughs> I love it. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see, Corey. A barrack or something uh, to keep... Like a keep to have them go for arms to defend. Yeah, um... Yeah, I understand why why you mentioned the barracks, uh, but right now the mechanic in the game is that they would get these items from the resource storage. Um, I do wish that uh, the resource storage... So, early during early access, when the game first came out, you could actually assign a worker to the resource storage and to the food storage. However, they didn't really do anything. They just stood there because there wasn't really anything for them to do because when food was made in, you know, at the, the campfires and stuff, it automatically went to the food storage. It's not like they went to the campfires and got it and took it to the to food storage, or it wasn't like they were taking food from the food storage and putting it in the home storages. Um, so they did away with the resource storage and the food storage employee. I do wish that they would bring that back at least for the resource storage, uh, because it would be nice to have somebody taking items from the resource storage to the different workstations. So that way you see that activity happening. Like, okay, the, there's the guy going, he's grabbing the iron, he's taking it over here to the, the blacksmith shop or whatever. You know, I, I wish that would be brought back. I would like to see that. But as far as the barracks goes, I understand what you're saying and I agree with it. I just don't know that they're going to implement it right away because everything is coming out of the resource storage. I have a feeling once they have all of the stuff added to the game, like the uh, if they're going to add raids or if they're going to add barracks or whatever like that, then I think they're going to start, I think they could start uh, implementing some extra workstations or an extra building or something that would uh, relieve the need to have so many resource storages. Like I, I've got five resource storages right now and I'm constantly working, trying to keep my resource weight down so my people can continue producing. Now granted, I have them producing a ton of stuff. Uh, it would be nice if we had uh, a lumber yard to where the logs would go rather than having the logs in the resource storage. I think that would be a really nice thing. Or a stone yard uh, to where the stone would go rather than keeping the stone in the resource storage. Now, granted, I can understand clay being in a resource storage because if clay gets wet, it, it gets nasty and stuff like that. Granted, you don't have to worry about that in the game. I'm talking like a real life situation. Clay needs to be somewhat the the water in the clay needs to be maintained um, but it would be nice to have those different resource 
location. So uh, a, a, a logging facility or a stone facility to where they're storing the stone or storing the logs and, and stuff like that. I think that would be kind of cool to have in the game as well. And then at that point, I can see them adding the barracks because then the barracks, once your blacksmiths make... Uh, say the armor and stuff, then the armor, instead of being stored in the resource storage, could be stored in the barracks. Um, but it, this is all speculation right now because I have no idea what they really have planned for the future. I'm not privy to anything. The only information I have and the only information I get is the same information that you get on the Steam site. Uh, now, granted, I ask a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and most of the answers I get are they can't share it with me right now. So if I know something, obviously uh, I'll let you guys know as soon as I can know. You can actually use a scythe as a weapon if you want to. Yes. Uh, let's see. What is the maximum number of buildings that you can have? I personally have my building limit set to 200 200 percent uh, if we go into the customized game you can see i have my building limit set to 200 percent that means that i can have 130 buildings and i currently have um i currently have 119 of 130 buildings Uh, let's see here. Uh, can we block attacks in the game right now? If not, that needs to change before raids. Uh, yes, you can block in the game. Um, there's your block right there. So I on PC, you hold down right click to block. See, I'm blocking. I personally don't use block because I'm usually using my crossbow. And the right-click button loads your crossbow. It does not have a block ability. Home storage is used before you get the food building. Yes. But the home storage is, is only has a limit, I believe, of 50 uh, kilograms. So a lot of stuff. So like your, your resources... Uh, you're going to drop them on the ground to save space in your home uh, storage. But again, I recommend going through the journal, going through your chapter quests, um, and getting, excuse me, getting to chapter six to where you have to build the barn, the resource storage, the woodshed, the food storage, the well, and the workshop. Getting to chapter six, uh, as quickly as you can is going to be helpful for you. But that means that you have to get through your first season first um, in order to advance to chapter three and so on. Uh, so I, I would recommend getting through your first season as quickly as possible so you can actually get to some of these other quests so you can actually access this stuff. And then it wants you to gain 500 uh, reputation and then obviously you're going to start recruiting people into your settlement after that. Best way to make fertilizer. Uh, berries. So if you're, fer if you're very early in the game, uh, springtime, go and pick unripe berries. Pick as many as you possibly can. Drop them on the floor of your food storage or your house, whatever. Uh, the very next season, they'll turn to rot. As soon as you have access to a barn, you can turn that rot into fertilizer. Otherwise, if you don't have access to a barn, then you have to go and buy. Uh, you either have to go and buy the you have to go buy the fertilizer or the manure. Uh, but if you don't have the barn, you're gonna have to buy the fertilizer. But again, getting to chapter six to where you have to build the barn is going to be very very helpful. Once you have the barn, you can actually uh, craft. The fertilizer either from manure or from the rot um two two thousand berries will net you two thousand two hundred rot excuse me two thousand berries will net you two hundred fertilizer 
because it takes 10 rod to make one fertilizer. Uh, I found that you had to put food in the house at the beginning until you could build the food storage. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, yes, you have to put it in the house until you can get to the food storage. But that should not take, shouldn't take very long at all. If you, once you get past that first season, then you can, you can kind of breeze through some of these chapter quests and get the needed buildings that you, that you're needing, like the food storage or the barn or the resource storage. Yes, pigs. Uh, if you can buy pigs, once you get to the pigsty, you can buy pigs and the pigs will produce manure. Uh, and they produce quite a bit of manure, actually. So the pigs are, are a good source for manure to make fertilizer as well. But again, you have to have the barn in order to turn that manure into fertilizer. Otherwise, you're buying the fertilizer from a vendor. What would be a first good crop to plant? It depends on what season you're planting. Uh, so each, so if you go into the knowledge, uh, let's go to, I think it's consumables. Does this have the seeds? No, oh, it may not. No legs. No seeds. Okay. Uh, there they are. So here's your seeds here. <clears throat> if you go to the seed, it will tell you uh, that you can plant it during the spring or autumn. The oat grain, you can plant it with the bag during the spring. Uh, let's see, the rye is during the autumn. So every one of them will tell you when it can be planted. And that's in the knowledge tab there. So you can find a lot of that stuff through the knowledge tab. Uh, let's see here. <coughs> Sorry. How do you get to the Medieval Dynasty server on Discord? Uh, I did share that link uh, earlier. Let me see if I can share it again here. That should be the Toplitz Discord link there that I just shared in chat. You're in the top lists. Uh, don't see Medieval Dynasty. Okay, let's do this. This. Bring this in here and this on. All right, so I am on the Top Lit site, Top Lit's official right here. If you scroll down, you can see Medieval General. And then if you scroll down even farther, you can see Medieval Dynasty gameplay and it'll have the different uh, pages. So the gameplay there, there's different ones for the different languages. You've, got, you've even got Medieval Dynasty console. This is the bug section here. Uh, so you want to make sure to, if you're on console, post it in the right location. Uh, if you have suggestions for the game, uh, there is a format that they like you to use. You can see this format's a little bit different. If you go up to the pinned messages, you can, right here, bullet hole has shared something. You can actually copy this entire thing, do copy and paste, and then all you have to do is change your title and then your text field as well. That's all you have to change. And then when you're done, you just hit enter twice. Uh, let's see, there's the bug hunting report here. So if you do have bugs, you can you can put them there. If you have technical issues, so say, like settings and stuff with the game, there's a section right there. So it is there, you just have to look for it. Uh, the top lists page is big because they got a bunch of games on there, but it is there.
Uh, oh yeah, you have to select a role before you can access most of those stuff. Um, I, I forget about that because I've already selected my role, so. <laughs> Alrighty, so um, I think we are going to actually call this a stream. This has been an absolute fabulous stream today, and I appreciate appreciate everybody being here and joining me for this. All of the questions. Uh, I'm going to. I don't know if I'm going to stream again this week or not, uh, just because I was on vacation last week. It all depends on my work schedule. But uh, if I can, it will probably be towards the end of the week. Otherwise, I'm, I'm going to at least try and stream once a week from here on out. Um, my schedule, my work schedule is busy this time of year because I am a, a seasonal uh, home service provider. So <laughs> it, it can get very busy. But I really do appreciate everybody being here today. And for all of the questions, I wish I was able to get to more questions uh, from the Facebook page. But if you guys are part of the Facebook groups, uh, feel free to share your questions there as well. You can go to my Discord. Matter of fact, I will share all of my links again in the uh, in the in the chat window here. So you can actually join my Discord, which is going to be right here. And then you can actually follow me on Twitter as well. I I do respond to messages on Twitter occasionally. Uh, Discord is probably one of the easiest places to reach me uh, because I'm constantly checking my Discord. I am in Discord uh, almost every evening, uh, evening for me in Tennessee. Um, so you can actually jump in. If you do see me in my voice channel sharing whatever game I'm playing, uh, don't hesitate. Feel free to hop in, say hi. You can ask me questions in there as well, or just pop in and just talk about the day's events. It doesn't matter. You can lurk if you want to. That's fine. Um, but feel free to join me at those locations. Uh, also, there's Buy Me a Coffee. If you wanted to leave me a tip, that's the place to do it. Uh, no membership required at, uh, at Buy Me a Coffee. You can actually just go in, use your credit card or whatever. It's one of the reasons I like the site over like Patreon because Patreon requires you to be like a member of their site or something. Uh, this way you don't have to be. Uh, you choose to, you know, whatever membership rating you want for uh, my Buy Me A Coffee and uh, you can choose that type of membership or you can leave a, a one-time donation. But either way, uh, it's all very appreciated and we will see you folks in the next one. You take care and happy hunting.